Well, it's almost Halloween, so what better time to look at Teddy Ruxpin, a 1985 animatronic toy precision engineer to live in your nightmares. So today, we're going to tear him apart, examine his entrails, and make sure he's fully working, and then do some weird experiments. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy cursed 1980s and 90s technology and uh, using it wrong, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this is an original Teddy Ruxpin, FNAF's Weird Little Grandpa. Released in 1985 by Worlds of Wonder, it featured a built-in cassette player and some weird old school tech that makes animatronic servos in the mouth and eyes move along with the tapes. And I never really knew how this thing worked. At least, not until I got this one donated to me at VCF Southwest and took it home in my carry-on luggage and probably jump-scared whatever airport employee was screening my bag. Anyway, since then, I've discovered the oh-so-hackable magic that makes this terrifying thing move, and I think you'll find it interesting. You see, the only things that actually go into a Teddy Ruxpin are four C batteries and a cassette tape but it produces sound, movement, and nightmares. And this works via the magic of stereo sound. So instead of explaining it to you, let me just show you. Right after this word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. Not only does PCBWay offer high quality PCB prototyping and production, but they also offer on-site PCB assembly and they can source some of the components with their turnkey service. PCBWay also offers a ton of additional services like high quality 3D printing, injection molding, even CNC machining and sheet metal fabrication. And if you're looking for ideas for projects, check out their shared projects section with tons of cool stuff submitted by other PCBWay users. So if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. So what I have here is an MP3 copy of a Teddy Ruxpin cassette. And you'll notice there's two tracks. This is a stereo cassette and thus a stereo recording. However, unlike a normal stereo cassette, the tracks look very different. And if I play this back, you'll see that they are indeed very different. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that horrible sound underneath the French voice. Yeah, this is a French Teddy Ruxpin recording. That horrible sound is the track that controls the servos. So when you put a Teddy Ruxpin cassette into this bear here, it only plays the left audio channel through the speaker. The right audio channel isn't audible at all. In fact, that's piped directly into the gubbins that control the motors. And in fact, we can split these two tracks apart. So now we have the ability to mute one of the tracks and just listen to the French audio. Or we can listen to just the horrible noises. <laughs> but it also means we can do some fun hackery because yeah, Let's see what happens if we only play the control track. <laughs> Look at that. No audio, just the animatronics going. And likewise, if we reverse that. We have audio, but no movement. So I think you might be able to envision some shenanigans we can do. <laughs> Hi, I'm Freddy Ruxpin, Teddy Ruxpin's derelict cousin. I like to do crimes. I'm not going to tell you any stories. I'm going to tell you terrible tales and live in your nightmares. Ha <laughs> Okay, so I've stumbled upon a hilarious discovery that I'm sure many 80s kids stumbled upon themselves. Although the internet says that pulsed audio modulation makes these motors work, it seems like 
any audio played through that track makes these motors move. Like when I play this through stereo, watch what happens. Hello, hello everyone. I am Steve from Mac 84. Welcome to another Mac 84 live stream where hopefully we will make some progress on some very stubborn computers. Fingers crossed. So can I just like pump any audio I want through this thing and it's going to move as long as it's going to both tracks? I have a very stupid idea. I'm so sorry, Teddy, but uh, this is probably going to hurt. All right, let's start this volume down all the way and we'll slowly bring it up. You know, if I get copyright struck for playing bass through Teddy Ruxpin, that's going to be hilarious. Don't copyright strike me. <laughs> Let me just remind you that that sound is coming out of Teddy Ruxpin right now. He's pretty high fidelity. <laughs> oh, look, he's sleeping. Yeah, I know I said we would take him apart and then do weird experiments, but I got a little carried away. And uh, yeah, we found out he was working the exciting way. This is giving me real alien autopsy vibes. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Oh, that is a rat's nest of wires in there. That is way more wires than I expected. All right, so after taking a picture so I can remember where all these connectors went, I've removed the tape player assembly. And yeah, I don't know what I was expecting to find on here. I was just curious what's inside. You know, look at that. There's a just a good old fashioned paper speaker. It's really nice how everything is connected to the board with headers instead of just being soldered there. It's actually a very modular Teddy Ruxpin. Yeah, so if we look on the actual tape player here, these wires come from the tape head. And uh, looks like one side, maybe white, is left and red is right for the stereo tracks. And then we can look on the Ruxpin guts and see where that comes in right here. I'm not really a electronics engineer. Okay, so these two bundles of wire here go up through his, uh, well, spinal column. <laughs> so I assume these are what control his motors. And if we wanted to hack into Mr. Ruxpin here, this is what we would need to tap into. And I have found some instructions online about eliminating this board here and using an Arduino and some fun code to do even creepier shenanigans with Mr. Teddy Ruxpin here. Okay, so this week's video is just us having a wee bit of fun mistreating poor old Teddy Ruxpin. It's really interesting to find out how it works and also to find out uh, just what kinds of weird things you can do with it. But our Ruxpin quest is not yet over because I found some instructions online and some code to really take the creep factor of our Teddy Ruxpin here to the next level. Like, uh, what if he was actually conversational? In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. Bonjour à notre nouvel ami Toby. Oh, bonjour. Comment vas-tu? <laughs> And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Matthew Kroll, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Sutek, 
Tom Woodfin and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.